Well, hello. Hello and welcome. Welcome to Around the Town with Mark. I am Mark Whalen, your host, and you know that we're always glad that you tune in and visit with us. Well, our area is just rich with museums. Everybody loves a museum. And we're also known for a lot of beautiful historic houses. Well, what if you put those two things together? What a great sight you would have. Well, <laughs> there is such a thing the Avery Kopp House Museum here in Groton, beautiful museum house. And my guest today, the director, is going to tell us all there is to know about this beautiful home, as well as we're going to be talking about some great upcoming events. So allow me to introduce Leslie Evans, mm -hmm. the director of the Avery Kopp House Museum. Leslie, welcome. Oh, well, thank you, Or Mark. should I say, welcome back yeah. to Around the Town with Mark. <laughs> well, it's always a pleasure to come in here, and thank you for those kind words. So. Well, we're delighted to have you back. As in one of our favorite topics, of course, is talking about all the wonderful things there are to see and do in, in Groton. And certainly the Avery Cop House is one of those, as I said. So please introduce yourself to, to um, my viewers. Sure, and, uh, I, I'm happy to. I, I'm happy today to be here to talk as we move into autumn, some of the fall events that we have on our calendar. And we have three that I'm going to touch upon and then one that I'm going to elaborate on. So okay. I'll just say right in the beginning that one of them are our um, haunted neighborhood walking tours. Yeah, everybody and that, loves haunted this Yes, time and of that's year. the one that I'll come back to and we'll, we'll um, talk a little bit more about that later in the show. But we do have two other autumn events that are lots of fun. One is a children's event okay. and it's a Halloween fairy tea. And that takes place on Sunday, October 22nd. And that's a gentle, um, child-friendly um, Halloween program where children can come either in costume or not. And they take part in exploring our house and gardens that um, we have a lot of little fairy houses and other magical vignettes set up. And they have a tea party and they make a craft to take home. So it's, a, it's a really a fun, old-fashioned, gentle Halloween, not scary in any way. Mm -hmm. And um, that's for children and their important adult that they might want to bring with them. And, and so for that, you do need to register for that because space is limited, but people can contact the museum and sign up for it. And, I, and it's, it's lots of fun. It's one of my favorite things that we do um, are the, the children's teas. And that's good for girls or boys, too. Okay. Sometimes people call and say, well, can boys come? And absolutely they can. And we, we encourage it. It's lots of fun. And then we have another um, event that's a, a hands-on workshop, um, a series we've been doing that focuses on our gardens um, called Herbs for Hearth and Health. Mm. And it explores through the seasons different ways that people use plants in the past, both for cooking and for medicine. And so people learn about some of the history of different plants and how people use them based on the season that we're in, and in this case, mm -hmm. autumn. And then we make some things. We make some, maybe some skin, a skin care product, or it might be um, something for cooking. Uh, sometime we do an infused olive oil or vinegar, or it might be a, a sugar scrub for the skin, or some kind of uh, you know, we did um, bath bombs last time that dissolve when we using essential oils. So that's lots of fun, and uh, it's educational, but it's it's also um, enriching in other ways. All the senses are touched upon because you get to smell good things and handle things, and then we have some things to taste and um, and then things to take home too. So I love that one. And yeah. th that's on Saturday, November 4th from okay. 2 to 4. So it's a, a two-hour program. Well, I, I, I know most people, um, when I mention the Avery Cuff House Museum, probably know what I'm talking about. But, but could you just, for those who are, sure. are not as familiar, I, let's just sort of have an overview of, okay. of, of where it is, what it is, and, and so people yes, know. Yes, and, really and we'll, we will see some pictures of it later on, too, so yep. I can talk a little bit. Uh, more about it then, but it's a, a historic house museum, as you pointed out, right on Thames Street. Our address is 154 Thames Street, okay. so very close to Paul's Pasta. A All lot of right. times people, we use that as a landmark in our neighborhood because a lot of people have it's been there. It's a great there. landmark to have so as a neighbor. It's right along the river in what was once 
the, the business center of Groton, the thriving commercial area that Thames Street once was, but also residential. Mm. And the, the Avery Cop House was built about 1800 and um, started its life as a very simple colonial house and then was added on to and Victorianized over the centuries, but always lived in by the same family and passed down from one generation to the next with all the contents of the house intact. So it's so really interesting from that perspective that it, it really shows how a family lived in a house over time. And each generation that inherited it wanted to put their mark on it too. Maybe they sure. changed some element of decorating or added something to it. Or, or sometime the world around them made changes. Technology came in in different ways, like electricity came to the house and um, plumbing came to the house. and um, the you know the depression affected the house world war ii sure, affected the yeah. house so all kinds of impacts so we use it to tell about our local history uh, through the families that live there and the house itself and the objects in it that's that's really important to mention yeah. and i, I want to emphasize to everyone that's listening is that's what makes it so very special is it's not just another museum house it's not just a building but it's 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 fully intact inside. Yeah, it it's, has it's, that authenticity that a lot of times I mean, you you don't feel because it hasn't um, been recreated in any way. Right. So people go into that yeah. building and they're seeing teas or cups and and saucers and and furniture and rugs and everything that was there when the people were living in the yeah, house. Yeah, it, it's, it's just as if the family stepped out for the day. Yeah. So it's all Even still the kitchen. it's all yeah. still there and we can um, use the use those things that both the objects and the rooms themselves and the landscape all around it mm -hmm. kind of as the stage set to to tell whatever story that we're hoping to tell and mm -hmm. um, for instance, one of the stories we tell uh, has to do with immigration because it wasn't just the family that owned the house living there, there were also their domestic servants. And those people tended to be recent immigrants. In the case of our house, they were almost always Irish immigrants or from okay. Scotland. But they were facing a lot of the same issues that people who are newly arrived immigrants face today, how to assimilate into a new culture and how to learn uh, how to do a job, um, how to make a living, how to support their family back home perhaps. Mm -hmm. So lots of issues that are still very relevant can be told through um, the artifacts that we have in the house. Wonderful. So I love it for that reason. That's, it's, that's what I said, makes it so, <laughs> so very unique and so fascinating. Uh, and um, the haunted walking tour that I'm going to talk about in a little more depth. Yep. I love that because it's not just to think about Halloween and haunted things and, and be scary, but as you go through the neighborhood to learn a lot about not only the Avery Cop House, but the whole neighborhood that surrounds it. That it was all part of the community together and, and everybody had an impact on everybody else. And a lot of the stories that we tell on that tour have been passed down as folklore over generations, or they reflect on, ha on historic happenings in the neighborhood. Yeah, so, there's, so, so they're not just made up stories. Oh, they're not made up yeah. at all. And they are, it's really like a history walk with uh, ghost stories thrown in, I guess is how I would describe it. Mm -hmm. So respectfully done, but it's, it's interesting. There are a lot of very fascinating stories that are maybe not easy to explain and mm -hmm. and pretty intriguing. A lot of interesting happenings. That's right. The unexplained happenings. And, and, and such. maybe not not surprising when you think that many of these houses were lived in by so many generations of people. And often at a time when people would have been born at home and they would have lived their whole life in that house and died there and then had their funeral from there, and then the next generation would have come in. And, and so it would be more surprising to me if something of the spirit of the people who lived there didn't linger on. It's, certainly, you know, it, it's almost inevitable in these kinds of houses. Especially when, when we're talking about the rich history, and then, yeah. of course, the, 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 the wars, the Revolutionary War battle was fought just down the street. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's uh, a lot of a rich lot history. In the, in, in the neighborhood and in the harbor, uh, yeah. across the river in New London, 
all the all the time things are happening and and impacting society around and changing things. So a lot of change seen there over time. That that house has stood looking out <laughs> over history creating itself and it changing has. itself yes. over, over the years. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Well, please go forward with, with some of the... I know we have some pictures. Uh, we do. We, can start we do. So we pictures. can start looking at some. Right. So uh, I think the first image that we have is just um, to show our fall calendar of events. And, okay, and that, that's just a little bit of a glimpse of that. But if people want to read that over in more detail, they can go on our website and view it there. Uh, if they call the museum, we're happy to mail them one if they would like or email Wonderful. one. But those events are all listed on our website, so you don't have to try and remember everything I'm going to say just this minute. But there it is, and if, if you'd like to register for any of those things, you can just get in touch with us either um, by telephone or email, um, and we'd be happy to sign people up. Wonderful. And so what I'd like to do is maybe elaborate a little bit on the haunted walking tour. Please. And so we can start out um, perhaps with an image of, a, of the book that's been written about our neighborhood uh, called Ghosts of Groton Bank. There it is. Our, that's our the neighbor, cover right our there. Our neighborhood being known as Groton Bank because it uh, is right on the bank of the Thames River. And this book that was written by uh, Hallie Keeler and David Rose and myself was written um, to, to put into a book form a lot of the oral history that has survived in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to do that a couple of years ago, and the haunted walking tour um, really is an extension. First, the book was an extension of the haunted walking tour, and now the haunted walking tour is kind of an extension of the book. Mm -hmm. So um, all the stories we tell in the tour are in the book, and um, but you might get some extra ones if you come on and, the tour. And where and is this that. book available for purchase? Oh, the book is available at the um, at the Avery Cop House Museum. Okay, great. And right also at the Bill Memorial Library. Oh, and the great. Friends of Fort Griswold also sell that book. Wonderful. So, so it's, it's very it's easy. readily available readily. and also okay. in local bookstores as well. Okay, great. Uh, it's a great read, so it, I, so I encourage kind everyone. Of fun. It is fun. It's a, it, it is a lot of fun. It's fun to... to um, to read through it, and there are a lot of good pictures in there as well. So when we do the haunted walking tour, we start at the Avery Cop House, and if we could just see a picture of that there. So that this is our house right on Thames Street. Okay. And we'll start there, and the tour goes out three times that evening. It's six o'clock, six thirty, and seven o'clock. Oh, okay. And uh, it's about a mile of walking, um, some steep at uh, one steep hill involved. So um, and a little little bit of uneven ground, so okay. um, have to be able to do a little bit of walking. Um, but starting at the Avery Cop House, visitors will go inside and they'll learn what a funeral might have been like uh, in years gone by. And so I think we have an image of that. Um, okay. It was it was very common in centuries past, really up until um, recent decades that people would expect in their last years, they wouldn't have been going to a nursing home. Um, and in most cases, if a, a younger person was sick, wouldn't have been dying in a hospital. If they had the misfortune to pass away, it would almost always be at home. And so your last days would be spent there, and then your funeral would be held from home, okay. um, generally from your parlor, if you had a house large enough to have a parlor. And if, if you didn't, but had a relative or a neighbor who had a parlor, maybe that's where the funeral would be. Okay. The people would come to the house and pay their last respects that way. And we do recreate that at the Avery Cop House oh. for this time of year. Oh. So people can get a glimpse of that. And then they will head out on their walk into the neighborhood. And the first stop will be at the Ebenezer Avery House, which is on the grounds of Fort Griswold. And Ebenezer Avery House, we don't go inside it at night, but we will tell some stories about it. And uh, this is a house where after the Revolutionary War battle at Fort Griswold, the wounded soldiers were taken to this house where it served as a hospital. Okay. And not all of those men survived. And there are some stories um, that have come down over time about, about the house. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about that. and. 
we will then walk right up to the top of Fort Griswold and um, see where it, we'll be standing, right where the battle happened. Okay. And we will have a representative from the Friends of Fort Griswold, David Rose, who will talk about the battle and also about some ghost stories that have been uh, told about the fort. And then we'll walk from the fort across the street to the Bill Memorial Library, which is a beautiful historic building yep, in itself, it is, right yep. and be able to um, go into the library and hear about some haunted happenings there that, that have happened over you know, the 100 plus years that the library has been open. And it, that's a lovely place to be able to admire the inside of that building. It's and, a, it and, is a beautiful, beautiful and, building. Yes. Um, just take a little bit of a rest and and then m we will walk down Monument Street which is a, a street in in our neighborhood that a lot of sea captains built um, beautiful homes on. A, a lot of um, men who made their living in the maritime trades of one kind or another either in the whaling industry or uh, in um, going f you know to the West Indies or even further afield to to India and to China and to the South Pacific and bringing back goods. They were very prosperous and, ten, and then built these beautiful homes and uh, lived out their lives if they were lucky enough to survive their career at sea it's here really on nice. Groton Bank. That didn't always happen. Sometimes they died at sea and we have some stories about that too that we'll tell on the haunted walking tour but you'll learn a bit about these sea captains and and how maritime trade affected our neighborhood. And then as we walk through the neighborhood, we'll work our way down back to Thames Street where we'll stop at the Mother Bailey House. And I think we have an image of that here as well. Um, and we're hoping to be able to go inside the Mother Bailey House. The Mother Bailey House is currently undergoing a restoration effort. And it really is a significant house in our neighborhood as far as our history goes. And, and the story of Mother Bailey and the War of 1812 that really mm -hmm. impacted the people who lived in this house. But there are some pretty interesting, unexplained happenings from that house. And even though I, we won't be able to go down into the cellar, I wanted to share a picture of the cellar with your viewers because it, it's very interesting to see. It has a full, there we go. the Mother Bailey house has a full basement there with two what are called chimney stacks. These, these st um, stone support pillars here are what the hearth rested on on the floor above. All right. And so there are two of those in the Mother Bailey house. And there are some pretty significant ghost stories uh, focusing on this house. One in particular involved um, maybe about 10 years ago some employees of the city of Groton were working in the house and they um, saw an image of a gentleman from maybe about around the time of the Revolutionary War or a little after down really? there. Yeah. Wow. And they weren't going in there expecting to see anything like that and um, oh. were pretty surprised by it and but they both saw it. So And I'm a believer. Uh, yeah, so I'm a believer. I there are a lot of things we can't explain. And I don't think we should feel like we have to be able to explain everything and sometimes just accept some of these stories for what they are. I do know sometimes people enter an old house and they're dying to see a ghost or they're mm. going to convince themselves that every rattle that the wind makes on the window is some haunting. Uh, there are people who are very, very skeptical. And when those kind of people, the skeptical ones, have an experience, to me, that's pretty compelling. Certainly, and, yes. and so we have had a lot of stories that came from people who never expected to see or hear or mm -hmm. feel anything like that. So it's, it's very interesting, and, it, and I leave it to people to draw their own conclusions from these stories. But if they join us for a haunted walking tour, they'll have about a dozen stories and be able to maybe decide and, what they think about Groton people, Bank. You, you don't have to live in Groton Bank to think that all of these happenings and things you're talking about are in the same community where our viewers 
most of our viewers live. So it's sort of like stories yes. of, of almost your own backyard or your community. Yeah, and, and a lot of them are not scary either. They're just uh, interesting, the I think. The stories of unexplained yeah. doesn't always have to be scary. There yeah. are. Like, I live in that neighborhood, and I live in an old house built in 1870. And I have not seen a ghost there or heard one, but our ghost cooks. Really? <laughs> and we smell things. Oh, yes, wow, and I, right. the, the first time I ever experienced that, I was coming up out of the basement, and I thought my daughter had started to bake bread because I could smell bread baking. And when I came up into the kitchen, that was gone, and there was nothing happening. Oh, I love and it. And so that's happened several times. It usually either smells like bread, or it smells like what I would liken to a stew or something like yeah, that. Yeah. And you only smell it at a certain place when you're coming out of the cellar. And those are all the types of things that would have been made at home yeah, in those yeah. days, not bought and at the local grocery that's store. That's right. So I don't know who it is or why it happens or why it lingers there, but um, and it, it'll sometime happen you know, a, a few times a month and then not again for many months. So it's very unpredictable. It was a real surprise, um, but it just is what totally it is. Fun. You know, I can't totally pretend it's fun. not there because right. it is. So, so I always um, another thing that's fun is that comes out of these tours that we do. Whenever we have a tour, we'll always get some uh, some new stories because somebody on the tour will say, "Oh, I want to tell you a story about something that happened to my cousin who lived." on, you know, mm -hmm. Baker Avenue or whatever. So we, we're always finding out new things. Um, and that, that's wonderful to us because a lot of times stories like this are, they're simply passed down from one generation to the next as oral history. Right. Some of the stories that people will hear on this tour have been oral history in the area since, since the time of the battle at Groton Heights. Okay. So, um, there were things that people started to hear right after that battle that they attributed to uh, ghosts from the mm -hmm. battle. And then others are much more recent things and everything in between. Oh, I'm so, I'm so envious. <laughs> I live in a very old house and I don't have a ghost. I'm well, not a ghost. A lot of people don't, or maybe you do and well, you don't know it, but well, I don't know. I a have lot, to start paying more attention. I don't know. So why, why do they linger one place and not another? another. And yes. it's hard to know. Um, we have had a, a paranormal investigation done at the Avery Cop House, as many historic houses have, and that brought out some new findings, that, things that we didn't know, like rooms that had a lot of activity in them that we weren't aware of, and then other rooms that we expected it that didn't mm -hmm. happen there. So, so I think you just have to be open-minded and see what comes. And of course, going forward, I know we've got, uh, uh, well, I mean, obviously we're talking about ghosts and we've got Halloween coming up next month. Um, and then I suppose uh, Christmas will be coming around the corner. Oh, and I know yeah. you, the house is usually really decked out. And, and it open is, for events and I hope then. maybe I'll be able to come back again and talk more about our Christmas events. But we do certainly Consider yourself have invited. Them. Yes, We do. We have an annual Christmas open house, which is a free event to our, the, just to thank our community for being so good to us. And um, that's on Sunday, December 10th from 4 to 6. Great. And so people can just come and enjoy that and have Christmas goodies and see how the house would have been decorated in years past and, Fascinating. and just yeah. enjoy it. And then we also have a, a parlor theater event, which is a, called a Dickens Parlor Christmas. Mm. Much in the way that people used to entertain their friends and family in years past where they would have a performer, either a musician or a singer or, or an actor, come to their house and perform for their friends in mm -hmm. the parlor. And so that's a pretty intimate setting. You can only have maybe 15 or 20 people to watch it at a time. Okay. But we have a very talented actress who's also a Charles Dickens scholar who comes. Wonderful. Her name is Jennifer Emerson. And she does a one-person show of a Christmas carol, oh, much terrific. like Charles Dickens would have done when he traveled around. And she has different voices for all the characters and sound effects that she does and so on and tells this 
a story that has such a profound message at Christmas time. So I love that program, and, and we'll have Ooh. that twice in December. And you, on, again, on our website, you can see the dates for yeah, that. So everyone really should take down that website. I hope visit they it will often. and visit it. There are other things to see on there. We we change um, images of things from our collection that you can see, or things from our archives, or just what's going on around the house and around with also links to different places in our community mm -hmm. where you can find out about other things that are going on in Groton. Well, it's, well, you know, like, like we've been saying all through the show, it's such an historic area. There's so many fascinating things to see at the Avery Cop House, but just all around the neighborhood. Yeah, the whole neighborhood and, is, uh, is rich with history um, from lots of different perspectives. If people are interested in maritime history, we have that, or it's architectural styles. We have the full spectrum of those from 18th century on up through the Victorian era and beyond. And then we have um, Fort Griswold, which does a great job of interpreting the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. And in season, uh, climbing that Groton Monument and the view from there is, is pretty tremendous. Spectacular. Yes. Spectacular. It, it's yes. Um, closing up for the season now, but that's a great yeah. thing to do in the, in the from May to September, you're able to do that. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Well, well, as we're winding down for our last few minutes, is there anything that um, I, we haven't talked about that uh, is a must say before we close? Or how are we doing in covering your... your I think we've covered them. I yeah. think just, you know, just to recap, um, Children's Halloween Fairy Tea okay. coming up on Sunday, October 22nd. All right. And... For, Write these down, everybody. For grown-ups, we have Herbs for Hearth and Health on Saturday, November 4th. Okay. Uh, both of those things require pre-registration, which you can do by calling the museum or um, emailing us. Okay. And then the Haunted Walking Tour, which is on Friday, October 20th at three different times, um, 6 o'clock, 6.30, and 7 o'clock. Okay. So, and... Um, if anybody requires any more information about those events, just give us a call and we're happy to Wonderful. tell you all about it. Well, Leslie, I want to thank you for being my guest again and talking about the Avery Cop House Museum. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. Um, thank you for everything that you do. Oh, gosh. It's, it's, it's just a, a wonderful museum house and, and we're, we're, everyone is, is lucky that we have such a beautiful place well, to see. Well, I really appreciate you uh, giving us a chance to tell your viewers about it because we're always seeking to get the word out and All right. we're a small nonprofit. So, you know, anyway, right. anytime we can share this information with a wider audience. We're extremely grateful. Great. Well, I thank you again very much for that. We'll have you back again real okay. soon to talk about Christmas. That'd be great. I want to mention that there is a fall art show and open house here at SEC TV Studios, October 12th, 5.30 to 8. And the studio is located between the post office and Benny's and the Groton Shopping Plaza. It's a great opportunity to come down and see this beautiful studio and support us. It's free. It's open to everybody. There's going to be music. There's going to be great food and wine. So put October 12th on your calendar as well. And, of course, put Around the Town with Mark on your calendar. Come back and see us. Watch us on, on SEC TV, and we'll have another show coming up for you real soon. And thank you again for tuning in today.